By now, Putin knows that he has made a massive mistake. All his moves seem to be much more desperate. Moreover, he is reported to be very sick. His greatest fear, I believe, is that he will not be remembered as a great leader. But this is exactly what is happening. Ukraine, with the help of the West, will withstand and that will ultimately seal the fate of Putin and the result of the war. Hi, here is Marco Vilenius, the Traveling Futures. You know about the future. We shape the future through our intentions and actions. And whenever we initiate something substantial, we will see the impact of that initiative over the time. Putin's regime started its attack on Ukraine over six months ago, and it was supposed to be a rapid victory. Something completely different emerged. What has happened is Putin reached none of its targets in this war. His willingness to fight and hold on to his power is causing the meltdown of his power as we speak. Putin at this moment is not on the top of the events anymore. He has become a follower. Quite recently, a journalist, Kathleen Belton, published a book. The name of the book is Putin's People, how KGB took Russia and then took on to the West. And in that investigation, she showed very clearly how actually Putin learned the way to handle and build the power system inside the Russia. Actually, this goes back to the 1980s when Putin was still working with KGB on the Eastern Germany. And those days, they started to understand within the Soviet Union that Soviet Union can never outcompete West with the competence or the advance of its economy. So they needed to find another way to do that. And they started to build a type of a strategy that instead of doing this competition, they will do other kinds of intervention in the West to disarray the Western way to work and the Western way to unite people. From those days of the 1980s, Putin learned the strategy that he has been using ever since, which is that not competing with the Western economies, but rather to cause disarray inside those economies. Today, as a result of the kleptocracy that Putin has been building over the last 20 years or so inside the Russia, has built him an opportunity to have a direct access to basically all cash that is available in the country. He seems to have made it very clear to everybody who has influential positions in Russia that you're not working on my side, you have no future in Russia. The people who are a part of his vast network inside the Russia have originally come in by making small compromises. But today, it's not about the small compromises anymore. It's about the big compromises. Putin's purpose, accordingly, has shifted from building the country to building the power regime for himself and to hold on to that power at any price. And this happens at the time when the average purchasing power of the people in Russia has dropped more than 10% in the last decade. In the normal circumstances, you of course expect that to rise, but this has not happened in the last 10 years inside the Russia, which has been one of the motivations of the Putin to externalize the internal problems that have occurred inside the Russia. This has also caused that more and more people inside the Russia have begun to question, is the direction that Putin is envisaging right for themselves or for their country? Putin's order in Russia has become all the time more repressive. Putin has essentially stopped making any efforts to show that he is an elected leader in a democratic country. 
he simply acts as a dictator. Putin's addiction to the power has essentially brought the Russian economy to the state where the economy is overtly dependent on the export of oil and gas. The money that comes from the oil and gas represents almost a half of Russian state budget, which is all too much for any state. And that is particularly dangerous position in the world, which is trying to get less hungry for fossil fuels. As it seems, Russia would in fact need much more diverse economy with much more value added products and services and industry. And in the last 20 years, there were signs first that this is exactly what the intention of the Putin and his regime is. But it turned out to be something quite different. Moreover, Russia actually needs interaction, exchange and collaboration with the West, even if Putin doesn't want to say that. This is because it is only through this type of the interaction that Russian economy can advance and move forward and become also something that contributes to the world economy over and beyond oil and gas. Because in order to be a successful economy, you need to have something that the world needs. And as said, Russian oil and gas has been a source of wealth for the country up until this point. But this will not continue indefinitely into the future. There needs to be other ways to build up the economy, to build up technology, to build up society where people have available jobs that are interesting and where they can contribute today's country's economy. Today, unfortunately, because of the sanctions that are in place, this type of interaction has been brought down to the very minimum level. And that is very unfortunate for Russian people and its economy. But obviously, it's not only the Russian or Ukrainian economy which is at stake here. One of the undesirable outcomes of the war has been the food shortage in terms of the grain export from Ukraine as well as from Russia. You see, Ukraine and Russia combined, they provide one third of the global wheat production and one fourth of the barley production. So what has happened is that particularly some countries in Africa has been brought into great difficulties as a consequence of this war because there has been a food shortage in there and the rise of the prices of agricultural commodities. So the countries like Nigeria, Somalia, Ethiopia, Yemen, Egypt have suffered tremendously and the people there simply don't have a possibility or money to buy food as they had done before. And in a lot of those countries that have been also crippled by internal conflicts, their own production has gone dramatically down with the result that they are largely dependent on import. And now this war has meant a dramatic loss of their welfare and simply the availability of the food. But let's go back to Putin and Russia. We have to keep in mind that it's not Putin's intention to build competitive economy for Russia so much as to build back the empire. That is the ultimate motivation and makes it also more logical why he has done those type of the moves that we have witnessed. So, fossil fuel export and European dependency on it has played a big part of the ways that he has been building his empire. While building this dependency for Europeans to withhold, it seems like his attack to Ukraine was more motivated by the tactic move 
to help him to hold on and reinforce his power as a leader of Russia. If that move were strategic with the idea to build a more competitive economy for Russia, I believe he would have never chosen Ukraine. Ukraine is by and large agricultural country with of course some industry and some uh, energy production and so forth and so forth. But that seemed not to be the motivation for Putin. So we need to seek the motivation of Putin from other sources. And I believe very strongly that this motivation comes from his idea to build stronger Russia that has more impact on its environment and that Putin as a leader will gain more power under his thumb. The question is, what comes after Putin? We cannot expect his regime to withhold much longer. So before the war, there were some polls inside the Russia that suggested that up to 45% of the people inside the Russia wanted to have the West as the ally, not as an enemy. And only 25 to 30% were thinking that for them and for Russia, West is an enemy. Then, additionally, there is also the question of generations. And there is also some research that shows that actually when you go to the younger cohorts of Russian people, they become much more Western-minded. Now, this builds an idea what will happen after Putin. In most of the cases, we tend to easily to think that there's going to be other regime which is even more aggressive towards the West. I don't necessarily think that's the case. The history proves that in Russia, at times, they have come a more Western-minded leaders to replace those that have been anti-Westernian. And it seems to me that Russia at this stage seems to be in that type of the watershed where maybe the next leaders will actually be much more western minded wants to build a friendly collaboration in the West. Of course, that remains to be seen, but as said, there is a certain pendulum going back and forth inside the Russian history and culture. In any case, it will take a long time after the Putin, after the war, to normalize the relationship between the Russia and the West. But with the right kind of a leadership, that can surely be done. The ultimate question is really, is Russia itself able to reinvent itself after this repressive regime of Putin? The years ahead will tell us that. So, summarizing, Putin and his cronies have been able to build this very repressive society with reduced economy. And now the question is, how does the Russia overcome that? With a massive mistake of attacking Ukraine, Russia essentially has been taken back in time when thinking about its economic prowess and competitive edge. It will certainly take a long time to build back the relationship that once was there, but I really think it's all possible. But it takes a liberal, western-minded leadership of Russia to do that, and then to continue to build the Russia, the type of economy and society that works best for its citizens and the world. Subscribe to my channel, share this video with your friends, look for related videos, and See you soon again.